Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, I'll put a link in the description. I'm a hopeless addict, and I do most of this recording in the middle of the night. Let's talk about insects like this is an RPG. Wasps would be pretty high with attack. Flies would be pretty high with agility. And beetles would be your go-to tank, having very high defense. In general, beetles have large, thick sclerites covering most of their body, and there's very limited exposure to the soft body wall membranes. Their forewings, which have been thickened into elytra, help cover most of the back of the body, and especially helps cover the pleural membranes, which have been migrated to the dorsal part of the body, which is what you see here. So this is a very soft area, which gets completely covered by those elytra. These are the elytra. So these are the four wings, which have been thickened and hardened. As well as covering the membranes, it also covers the spiracles through which the beetle breathes because these are uh, a good way for parasites and pathogens to enter the body. So all of that is very well protected by these uh, very sturdy elytra. But what happens if you max out on this defense? What you end up with is a zoferid which are called the ironclad beetles. And they are these beetles are mostly associated with fungus and dead wood. If you were to min-max defensive attributes and really go to the extreme, you end up with the diabolical ironclad beetle, Floeotes diabolicus, which has the hardest known exoskeleton of any arthropod. The diabolical ironclad beetle has an exoskeleton so tough the insect can survive being run over by a car. The majority of its durability comes from the structure of its elytra and how it connects to the rest of the body. The elytra have a complicated locking mechanism, which allows the small beetle to resist weights up to 33 pounds placed on its back. The elytra is functionally fused and the beetle is now flightless. So there's no need for it to ever open to expose the wings. This, this sort of shell structure created by the fused elytra helps preserve moisture as well because it blocks the spiracles, which are one of the main sources of evaporation. So this allows this beetle to live in the very arid California climate where you can find it. The exoskeleton itself is made up of chitin fibers, which are coiled around themselves and then layered. This structure allows the exoskeleton to bend and twist at a microscopic level, which prevents cracking. Unlike other arthropods like a coconut crab, which has an extremely tough exoskeleton, it binds calcium within that exoskeleton in order to maintain that toughness. This ironclad beetle doesn't. Its exoskeleton is entirely organic. The cuticle is also significantly thicker in this beetle than in other insects. The hardened elytra, which is what you see here, these are the two sides of the elytra, are fused together with this zipper-like mechanism that you see here, this sort of S-curve zipper-like mechanism, which prevents the two halves from buckling under pressure. There are multiple versions of this binding mechanism where the elytra touch the rest of the beetle's body, which is what you can see here. There are three different kinds, interdigitated, latching, and freestanding, depending on where you look on the beetle's body. On the back of the elytra, on the butt end, you have this freestanding latch mechanism, which allows the elytra to strike the back of the body, but then slide with quite a bit of friction, and this allows some compression and dissipates some of the force. The front sides of the elytra up here fit together with these digitated locks, these interdigitated locks. And these are basically a series of fingers which clasp together between the elytra and the sides of the body. And this locking mechanism completely resists compression. So this part of the body, which generally covers uh, vital organs in the beetle, cannot be compressed. So it either remains intact or uh, crushes completely. There is no intermediate portion. And then along the back and side of the elytra, you have this basic latching mechanism, which fit together and are bound together with a proteinaceous glue that allows for impacts without snapping. You can see here the amount of force that is required in order to buckle these sorts of uh, latch mechanisms. This blue is the first support. These are the inter interdigitated supports. They are capable of resisting an enormous amount of force before finally breaking. They don't just give out, they actually snap. Whereas the back of the elytra, which are these freestanding latches, slide past each other. They don't support a ton of weight, but they also won't break. 
And then you have these intermediate side latches, which can resist a lot of pressure, but will gen then uh, fail at the last minute. If you've never collected these beetles, an interesting problem that entomologists have when they're adding these to their collection is that pins that you would normally use to mount beetles are incapable of piercing through the elytra or the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton will actually bend the pins or break the pins before they can get through. So you actually need to drill a hole in these beetles in order to be able to mount them. I will link a couple papers on these beetles in the description and I'll talk to you guys later.